Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And it was one of those cloudy, dreary, wet days once again. This is a shot from this afternoon. Things did begin to lift a little bit, but still some patchy fog out there. We could expect that overnight tonight, to, uh, overnight tonight. And then tomorrow, kind of a break from the wet weather as we take a look at the rest of the week ahead. We will see high temperatures tomorrow with that morning fog, about 35, and then back to the wet stuff. Wednesday night, Thursday and Friday. But notice our temperatures. We're going to warm up to almost 40 on Friday, a break Saturday, and more wet stuff likely on Sunday. We'll have your complete North Central Washington weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. Two vehicles were involved in an accident on the Malaga Alcoa Highway early this morning. Sheriff's deputies say a group of teenage girls who were targeted online by a convicted sex offender turned the tables on him, unearthing his identity and alerting police. And a claim that Gray City Church has violated Wenatchee's nuisance noise ordinance must be reassessed by Chelan County District Court. But first, our top story tonight. An afraid a man was sentenced to 30 days in jail for threatening a neighbor with a sawed-off shotgun in Douglas County. 56-year-old Eric Lee Cranford pleaded guilty Wednesday to felony harassment and possessing an illegal firearm in Superior Court. Cranford was arrested last May near Withrow, where he lived at the time, after texting and making verbal threats to his neighbor with the shotgun in hand. Cranford already spent most of his sentence time in custody in the weeks after his arrest. He must also serve a year on probation. Two vehicles were involved in an accident on the Alcoa-Malaga Highway early this morning. At approximately 6 a.m., the vehicles were traveling too fast for conditions and hit black ice, according to Chelan County Sheriff Sergeant Chris Foreman. One car rolled over and both landed off the highway in a ditch near train tracks. After initial concern, deputies determined that the removal of those cars would not affect train schedules. Both drivers were cited for going too fast for conditions and one driver was cited for no valid operator's license with ID. One person sustained minor injuries, although they were not transported to a hospital. Sheriff's deputies say a group of teenage girls who were targeted online by a convicted sex offender turned the tables on him, unearthing his identity and alerting police. Four teenagers in the Manson area reported receiving Snapchat solicitations from the same user in 2021 who claimed to be a 17-year-old Kashmir resident. But they told Chelan County investigators they traced the account to Bernardino Dwight Hamilton. He's a 27-year-old Manson man with prior convictions for child molestation. Hamilton allegedly admitted to contacting five juvenile girls using a smartphone he was not permitted to have under his probation. Hamilton was booked into the Chelan County Jail on Thursday. He could face five charges of communicating with a minor for immoral purposes. A claim that Grace City Church has violated Wenatchee's nuisance noise ordinance must be reassessed by Chelan County District Court. That's the ruling on Friday from Superior Court Judge Kristen Ferreira, who heard the city's appeal after a district court judge dismissed the case last April. The argument came down to whether the district court had adopted a rule that allowed such dismissals without a contested hearing. The rule appeared on the local court's website, but the administrative office of the Washington court said it had never been submitted as a formal rule. It may be that the district court did this intentionally and, and, and just didn't fix its website or it didn't do it intentionally and it just needs to fix it by submitting an, an updated rule set. But either way, it needs to get resolved at the district court level. And um, I am going to remand this to the district court to have, uh, to have the hearing, the contested hearing, because there isn't currently a rule that allows a contested decision on written statements. 
So again, they can fix it. I think they probably need to do something whether they're going to adopt it or not. When we come back, melting snow with more precipitation led to closures along some highway choke points around north central Washington. Farmers who rely on John Deere tractors now have the right to repair their own vehicles or find cheaper parts from third party suppliers. And Chelan County Sheriff Mike Morrison introduced the two newest leaders of his command staff today in a meeting of county commissioners. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Welcome back. In another news, melting snow with more precipitation led to closures along some highway choke points around north central Washington. Tumwater Canyon west of Leavenworth shut down for 14 miles Saturday morning due to high avalanche danger and remained closed off and on throughout the weekend. A rock slide Sunday shut down both directions on Highway 97A north of Eniat. Detours at both incidents allow travelers to continue on to their destinations. Well, farmers who rely on John Deere tractors now have the right to repair their own vehicles or find cheaper parts from third-party suppliers. For years, farmers and consumer groups have sought what's called the right to repair, saying the company's proprietary licenses force them to pay exorbitant prices for parts and repair. On Sunday, Deere signed a memorandum of understanding with the American Farm Bureau Federation agreeing to open its tools, software, and documentation for use by farmers and independent mechanics. The Farm Federation says it will lobby state legislatures to pass bills this year to codify the right to repair into law. Well, in other news, Chelan County Sheriff Mike Morrison introduced the two newest leaders of his command staff today in a meeting of county commissioners. Ryan Moody will become Chief of Special Operations for the Sheriff's Office, while Daniel Osment was named as Undersheriff. Osment joined the force in 2020, hired from the Marysville Police Department by former Sheriff Brian Burnett. Moody has been on the force since 2012. He's a recipient of the State Law Enforcement Medal of Honor for his part in saving a man from a house fire in Chelan. Morrison says the role of Chief of Patrol is to be filled soon. Well, you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. It all starts somewhere. 
Join the NCW Life channel for live coverage of the Apple Blossom Top 10 selection process. Tune in to our Facebook page for the Get to Know You on Monday at 6 p.m., the Top 10 speeches Tuesday at 10 a.m., and the Top 10 announcement at 6 p.m. Coverage is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Harvest Valley Pest Control, and Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center. Watch it all on the NCW Life channel Facebook page. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, today marked the first day of the 2023 legislative session in Olympia. In a legislative preview event last week, leaders from the two parties said housing and the problems brought by the lack of it will be high on their agenda over the next 105 days. I, I think the people of Washington have really spoken in terms of the majorities that they sent back to of the legislature and they've said that housing and homelessness is a very important issue for us to focus on. Behavioral health is kind of a subset or, you know, it overlaps. There's a Venn diagram there. Community safety. So all these are things that you mentioned and protecting abortion rights. The other thing that I think is going to be an omnipresent issue over all of these and will prevent us from solving any of them is if we don't address workforce in a really big way this session. So I, I'm hoping that we will do a lot of work there and I expect that we um, they we will. I think Washingtonians have said that they do trust Democrats to to lead and to bring innovative solutions to these challenges. Um, and so we're looking forward to leading the way, hopefully in a bipartisan uh, way. I was just on a panel last night with Drew Stokesbury, and I think we agreed on many, many things, sometimes the details of how we work them out. There's disagreement, but I, my guess is that there is a lot of agreement. The cost of, of food, of gas, of housing, of child care are, are frankly unaffordable for many Washingtonians today. And even if they could afford it six months ago, just barely, uh, today they probably can't because of inflation. They probably got a raise in there and they still can't afford it. They're living on credit. This is a real problem. Uh, and then education. And I, I, whatever the polls say, this is a huge important problem. There's a both a immediate problem with le learning loss and there's a long-term structural funding problem that we're, we're falling behind yet again. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, whether we think uh, the last couple years when we were not in person were consequential or productive, we haven't solved the problems. We must, we must do better. Whether it's the dying dreams of home ownership in our state, you know, if you're, if you, the chance of you owning a home in our state are marginal, are significantly lower than they were only a few years ago. Uh, the, the deaths of despair right now, if you are under 60, your second leading cause of death is overdose. We got to do better. Switching gears now, let's take a look at your north central Washington weather forecast. Hope your weekend was a good one. It was a wet one. In fact, record setting precipitation on Saturday. Got plenty yesterday too. We'll get to that in a second. Beautiful shot. Looking back down at the Wenatchee area from our number one canyon Sky Fi Tower camera. And you can see those low hanging clouds. We did that have that throughout most of the day with some shower activity. It was mainly on the light side. Some fairly decent rain about the noon hour or so. And our temperature today, pretty much where we should be for this time of year. 34 unofficially at the airport. 32 is our normal high. And our record high temperature, 48 degrees. And that was set back in 2000. 
2007. 27 is where we started the day this morning, so we only great, uh, warmed up about 7 degrees throughout the afternoon today. 23 is our normal low temperature, and 3 below zero, our record cold set back in 19. Uh, 74. Okay, we picked up a quarter of an inch of rain yesterday, about four one hundredths today, so almost three tenths of an inch pa over the past 24 hours, and that now gets us to 0.79 inches since January 1st. Off to a great start once again. Sunrise 747, and the sun set at 430. Taking a look at what we can expect as we get you into Tuesday, temperatures about the same as today. The big difference tomorrow will be quite a bit drier throughout the area. 40 for Moses Lake, a nice one for Afreda at 39, 38 in Quincy, and then cooler for Wenatchee up into the OMAC area. Ellensburg, you'll go to about 38 tomorrow, 35 for Kashmir, and 30 the high temperature tomorrow up in Lake Wenatchee. Taking a look at what we can expect tonight, there is that area of low pressure that's hanging off the coast of Washington right now. That'll continue to bring shower activity, but it'll mainly be in western Washington tonight and into our overnight hours. Maybe places like Plain and Leavenworth, some scattered snow overnight. For Tuesday then, a little bit of fog. Might have to deal with that in the morning. Mostly cloudy skies. Not that bad though. We will be dry tomorrow. High temperatures in the middle 30s. Getting into Wednesday. For the most part, Wednesday will be a decent day before this thing kicks into gear. As I mentioned, not so much during the day. We'll stay just on the cloudy side, but as we get into our evening hours, that's when that system will begin to move our direction. High temperatures in the mid 30s for Thursday. This is your morning time as you head out the door Thursday morning and it's not going to change much throughout the day on Thursday. Rain is likely highs in the mid to upper 30s as our temperatures begin to creep up a little bit Fr Friday. It's going to be a wet one. Cloudy rain is likely throughout the day once again. High temperatures creeping up a little bit more. Temperatures in the upper 30s. This is uh, quitting time on Friday. It's going to be a wet one. And then as we get you into Saturday, our break day and our first day of the weekend. Mostly cloudy and mild. It shouldn't be bad at all for Saturday. High temperatures near that 40 degree mark. That's going to feel awfully nice for us. And then Sunday, once again, more storminess headed our way. Double shot of low pressure off the west coast. We'll see rain and snow likely on Sunday. Once again, it's going to stay mild, so I think most of that will be rain for us on Sunday with high temperatures again near 40 degrees. Let's take a look now at that seven-day forecast brought to you by Apple Valley Honda. And Tonight, we'll drop down to 29 degrees, a break from the wet stuff for Tuesday and 35, and then very wet overnight into Thursday for Friday as well as our temperatures climb about two to three degrees as we get into the end of the week. 39 for Friday, a break from the wet stuff Saturday and 40 degrees. And by the time we get you into Sunday, cloudy with rain and snow likely. High temperatures then of 38. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. NCW Live Channel is your home for local sports with the Wenatchee Panthers at East Bont Wildcats right here. Coverage brought to you by Abbey's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Card Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, and Together for You. Follow all the action right here on the NCW Life Channel. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel.
And a happy Monday to you. A wild and wacky NFL season came to an end yesterday with the Seahawks somehow making the playoffs. It began with Seattle going to overtime to beat the Rams 19-16. It wasn't easy. Jason Myers had a chance to win it at the end of regulation, but doinked it off the right upright, so it would go to overtime. Then after a three and out by Seattle's offense in the extra frame, Quandre Diggs comes up and out of nowhere to intercept Baker Mayfield on Los Angeles' first possession in overtime. It was Diggs' fourth interception of the season and second in as many weeks. Seattle moved the ball down the Rams' 14-yard line where Myers would get another chance at the game winner. He hits it from 32 yards out. He'd make it, and the Seahawks still alive for the postseason. Coach Pete Carroll beaming about how his team came through when they had to. It was a really good finish uh, to this season for our guys and uh, get some wins and get something going here and, and feel good about it and doing the things we had to do uh, to give us, you know, with what we were faced with. Um, this win is an important win for, for everybody in, 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 on our team. Um, we put everything we had into it. We, we, we treated this game like it's the biggest game we could ever play, and we'll, if we get a chance, we'll do that with the next week too. But the guys rose to that thought, and, and really everybody battled. The NFL is so hard. You, know, you wonder, well, how can a team that's struggling you know, have, have, have that kind of a close game against this? Because that's just the league. That's how it goes. Teams are really good, and coaches are really good, and you got to give them a lot of credit. They, they've continued through a lot of hard times this year to, uh, to play their butt off all the way to the end of that thing. And... and uh, you know, I, I think Sean does a great job, and, and we—I mean, I don't think it. I know it. He, he does a great job, and, and uh, um, a lot of credit for them hanging. It was, it was a hard year for them. Quandre Diggs says the interception in overtime was a play he thought at first was going to be a game-winning pass for the Rams. Dude was wide open. I'm just like, in my mind, I'm just thinking the worst. You know what I mean? And, Oh, man, I felt like I was 25 again, running and jumping in the air. So uh, for me, it was just one of those plays. They drew it up perfect. You know, they got us in the coverage that they wanted us. And um, I was just able to go out and make a play. But um, that's probably my favorite interception ever because just the, the atmosphere, you know, everything that um, that went along with this game and this interception, you know what I mean? It was, it was dope. So... Um, all I seen was the ball, and I was like, I'm going to go get it. And I was able to go get it, and I caught it. That's a term I'd never used, but it was dope. Following Seattle's win, it was time to root on the Detroit Lions. This is a tweet from the Seahawks saying, one pride. Down by three, late in the game, Detroit scored the go-ahead touchdown on a one-yard run by former Packer Jamal Williams. And there he is, big touchdown. Then on Green Bay's next possession, Aaron Rodgers dropped back to pass, heaves one under pressure. Detroit's Kirby Joseph steps in front, intercepts the ball, giving the Lions the ball back with 3.37 to go and the lead, trying to run the clock out and ice the game. Detroit goes for it on fourth down and one at the Packers' 16-yard line. Jared Goff hits DJ Chark for the first down and a 20-16 win, sending Seattle to the playoff. So, here are the scores on the last day. Seattle, of course, beats L.A. in overtime, 19-16. San Francisco crushed Arizona, 38-13. Detroit beats Green Bay, 20-16. So Seattle gets the seventh seed with a 9-8 record. Detroit and Green Bay will be staying home. Seattle will play at San Francisco in the Super Wild Card weekend this Saturday at 1.30 on Fox. The Char Chargers will play at Jacksonville, who beat Tennessee to win the AFC South. That game, Saturday night, 5:15 on NBC. Sunday features three Three games with the Bills and Dolphins in Buffalo on CBS. That's followed by the Giants and Vikings in Minnesota. That's on Fox. Baltimore plays at Cincinnati on NBC. Wild Card Weekend wraps up uh, in Tampa Bay where Tom Brady will face Dak Prescott and the Cowboys 515. That's Monday on ABC and ESPN. Speaking of ESPN, Wild Football Weekend concludes tonight with a college football national championship. Third-ranked TCU taking on top-ranked Georgia in the CFP national title game at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. 13-1 Horned Frogs, big underdogs to the 14-0 Bulldogs. That game just getting underway on ESPN. Let's take a look at what happened over the weekend in men's college basketball. Pretty good one. Uh, Eastern Washington edged Sacramento State Saturday, 78-75. Muhammad Gay scored team-high 24 points to lead Washington State to an upset over fifth-ranked Arizona. How about that? Rocky road trip, but ninth-ranked Gonzaga held off Santa Clara by five behind 20 points apiece from Drew Timmy and Nolan Hickman. 
Whitman, Arizona State took care of Washington on Sunday, 73-65. Women's college basketball, Sacramento State topped Eastern Washington. Haley Van Lith poured in a team-high 18 points, had seven assists to help Louisville beat Pittsburgh on Sunday, 76-69. Also Sunday, Charlize Ledger-Walker had 22 of her 26 points in the first half. Washington State beats Washington 66 to 52. Seattle Kraken picked up a big win at Ottawa Saturday by a final of 8 to 4. Seattle had eight different players score as the Kraken improved to 3 and 0 on the current road trip. Uh, they are still on the road trip as a matter of fact. They're playing right now in Montreal. That is on Root Sports Northwest if you are a big hockey fan. Speaking of hockey, Wenatchee Wild had a successful trip north of the border, winning two out of three games over the weekend. The three games in three days began on Friday with incredible come from behind 6-5 overtime win over Powell River. Cade Littler scored a hat trick, including the game winner in the extra frame. And down to 18 seconds to go. Wild holding the zone still. Across for Samoza through the left wing circle. Turnaround chance from Littler. Knucks, uh, knuckles that one high and wide as well. Across. Battle for it. Trying to jam it home. They score. We are tied. A bounce in front of the net. Can you believe Garrett Sedlowski right there to hammer it home? Garrett Sedlowski has tied this game with 5.5 to play. Caught on the corner boards. Gasparini sneaks it off the wall, finding Kim. Left wing Littler, two on one if they move. Littler down the left wing, wrist shot. Say, May, does it get through? It does. They score. Wild win. 6 5 in overtime. The red light did not go on, and it does get over the line. That is a goal. That is a win. Cade Littler, the hat trick to finish it off tonight. 42 seconds into overtime. The Wenatchee Wild come back from down 5-1. They win it 6-5. Austin Drade with a call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Saturday didn't go so well. The Wild fell to Alberni Valley 4-1. to Parker Murray was the lone Wenatchee player to find the back of the net. Things did go much better on Sunday. Wild beat Cowichan Valley 4-1. Very special game for Micah Berger. He gets a hat trick. Wenatchee is back home this week. They'll play Wednesday against Salmon Arm at 6.05 at the Town Toyota Center. We'll get a preview on that coming up Wednesday with Austin Drotty on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We've got much more sports on the website. Go to ncwlife.com for that. That's sports news. <sighs> okay, Grant, back to you. Thanks, Eric. Is that all? <laughs> all right, now let's check in with Dan Coons for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. As we've already mentioned, the legislative session got underway today and uh, last week to give us a preview of what to expect with a 105 days session. Our very own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to talk to Mike Steele, 12th District State Representative. Mike Steele to give us a preview about how the sausage is being made in Olympia. We'll have that long form interview on tomorrow's Wake Up in Anchee Valley and we'll talk a little more apple blossom, sports and everything else, including that mild and wet weather forecast. Get your Tuesday going. We're going to be live and local tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. right here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And speaking of Apple Blossom and live and local, yeah, it's Apple Blossom time right now. You can watch tonight to get to know the 33 Apple Blossom royalty candidates. We will have it live on our NCW Life Facebook page, and that will be with Eric Granstrom from 6 to 8 p.m. Once again, our Facebook page, Apple Blossom underway. All right, and that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Get inspired, engaged, and networked. 
right here on the NCW Life Channel. The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today.